Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex. This is gonna be a new one because this is uh, without the whole. This is patron Saint Matthew and Shannon Lorenz. Matthew and Shannon Lorenz. Thank you for the whiskey. Ah, oh, that's just not the same. Dee. That's a that's a thud. Dee. Oh, I'm excited about this one because this is one of the people in the U.S. who is directly responsible for the reobsession with uh, exotic corn. But, and by exotic, I mean corn that everyone used to use but has gone away in the last fifty years. We know this bottle. The wood. Oh, yeah, that's the. King the King. Bottle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've used this for some of our some yeah. of this. This is a cool this bottle. This is the 375 version. Yep, this is a cool bottle. Um, so this is the dude, uh, Gary Heingardner, who if you have time, go look up Gary Heingardner in craft distilling. He's mm -hmm. he's a character. He's yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah, he's amazing. How so? What makes him? He's just this old dude who had what seems like a Mark Twain style weird career of yeah. like, or all these varied things and just decided to get into whiskey. Mm. Then he, but he's an agronomist and so he's serious about grain. Yeah. And he was like, why are we using shitty feed corn for good whiskey? Yeah, yeah. So he was like, Fuck that, we went into, so his early days like ran into Chip Tate and um, Bill Owens, the founder of ADI and all these like early guys. And right. he's started crafting like blue corn. Yeah. He ran in, and you know, you know, Balconis was roasting it. He came up with a whole other plan. Mm -hmm. Like so he's serious about grain. As a matter of fact, he recently announced he's selling the distillery. Okay. So he can focus on grain. Oh, so the period. He, basically he's got the agronomist training. Yeah. He's just gonna go all in. Decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is not like he got a degree. He's an, an older dude who looks like he could have like spun Gold for you know. Uh huh. What's the dude? Uh, you guess my name and you can. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Gold on yeah. a Rumpelstiltskin. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and he actually on a wood lathe makes wooden hats and wears them. Solid wood hats. Sounds like. Yeah. I mean. Hence, wood hat. Wood hat. Nice. Now this is the bourbon esque that they make, which is their bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, finished in beer barrels. Yeah. And this is from Third Wheel Brewing Inter Sandman is the beer. Okay. This batch 20. It smells like there's nice, uh, like a crafty granola with some dried, you know those dried apple chunks they'll put in things? Yeah, and cranberry, dried cranberries. Yeah. This is almost a trail mix with none of the chocolate. Mm-hmm, a light dusting of some cinnamon. Yeah, I like that apple note. That's really nice. It feels like a natural, not artificial, sugary apple, but just a natural. Yeah, like you're gonna find this fresh when you go to like a gift shop in the middle of Missouri, and they've got like hand wrapped bags mm -hmm. of dried fruit from a local orchard. Why does it feel like? Because this is not the lobby of Cracker Barrel. Yeah. But it's the feeling of in the lobby of Cracker Barrel. Yeah, that's all right. the like. Yeah, the, Cracker Barrel franchised that right. vibe. Yeah. But this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's that yeah, yeah. that old timey tchotchke. Yeah. Would deal. you like some uh, old wrapped snacks in plastic yeah. and a blanket? Yeah. And a child's wooden toy. Yeah. And a coffee mug with a cute saying. Uh, and a doll. Who was I talking to? <laughs> Last week I was talking to somebody. We're talking about the Cracker Barrel model. Mm -hmm. They or like a Cracker Barrel location. The food is break even. Yeah, it's like it's fine. Yeah, no, people that work in the industry that know the numbers, uh, they're not going to make money on the food. Oh, I think you meant quality. I think it's also break even on quality. No, no, it's no, like no. it's decent. No, 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 it's break even in terms of yeah. them making the money okay, there. That makes sense. They make uh, per location. It's a million dollars a year, based on just the, the retail. Gift shop. The retail gift. Oh, yeah, because the markup there's like three hundred percent. Yeah, and then you start to think about how often have I waited for a table at Cracker Barrel? I haven't been in yeah. years because you often wait so long. It's like wait a minute. One of the reasons why they're, they're in no hurry to get you to the table yeah. is because Just the longer you're in the gift shop, they're gonna, you're going to end up buying something. I always end up buying one of my boys uses their money on something that they don't need. Oh, that's, yeah. Every time. Like, Dad, you know, I really need this. Do you have money? Wait. Yes. Are you sure? Right. Yes. Okay. You're waiting 20 minutes with kids. They're going to buy something. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to. Ooh, interesting. That's softer than I thought it would be. And a little more creamy than I thought it would be. All of the apple it was setting me up for. Mm -hmm. 
It delivered. Apple cinnamon, I like it. Yeah, 90 proof. Okay. Yeah, I dig. Uh, there's a slight, slight haze to it. Yeah. And every time I see that, it's like, I'm probably going to like it. Yeah, because you chose flavor over... Yeah, over pristine clarity. Yeah. And again, it's very, very faint. It's hardly there at all. But you see it even a little bit, and it's like, okay, they could have more richness than most. I really like this. This is not a standard bourbon. Mm -mm. This is way more of an outlier, but it's not like a new entry, fainty kind yeah. of I get young grain. To, to the point about the apple, I get some cider notes. Mm -hmm. There's some cashews. Yeah, I can see what you mean by the that, that dusty nut kind of, yeah. not quite wax like walnut or mm -hmm. almond. Yeah, there's like a cashew like, flavor. And cashew cream is legit. Is that a thing? Yeah. Cashew cream. You can use it in vegan meals as a replacement for cream. Okay. Uh, for dairy. And it's really good, actually. It's got a nice texture to it. Mmm. Do you know Cracker Barrel was the first place I ever had a uh, maple syrup? Oh, because to that point, you'd always had the... Uh, Just the... Yeah. The my whole life, all I'd ever had was yeah. corn syrup. Yeah. Yeah. With flavoring. Whole life. I was... <laughs> I was like in my mid thirties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'd had it and didn't remember. Right. But I have no recollection Just of it. Grown ass man. I was on tour, <laughs> and my guitar player was like, "Well, I'm I'm gonna order." Oh, at the at the uh, at Cracker Barrel, you can request the maple syrup. Yeah. Right. This is um, how trashy I am. The maple. Syrup. And they were like, "Oh, can, and the, my guitar player was like, oh, can we get some bottles of maple syrup?'" And it comes in like fifty mil bottles, right? And I was like, why are you doing that? He's, he's like, it's so much better. I'm like, right. really? It's not that much better. Mm. And then I tried it. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this is so much better. Yeah. So we ate all these things and I went home. And I got home. I was like, you have no idea. Maple syrup is amazing. And I bought some at H-E-B and I brought it back and I tasted it. And I was like, this is not as good. No, it's not. So I went and looked. You know where it was? It's Cracker probably, Barrel? It was probably from Canada. That's no. Where you, that's where you were wrong. Vermont. Because Canadians don't know how to. Oh, it was Vermont? Vermont. No, no. No, here, what, here was how, the trick. You're supposed to support this very trolley narrative. No, no, no. no. About here's, maple syrup. Here's the funny thing. And you thing. bailed. It's even funnier. Yeah. It turns out if you look at the bottle of Cracker Barrel and turn it around, yeah. it's a percentage. It's 50% uh, maple syrup and 50% yeah. Corn yeah. syrup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's actually, I like it better because <laughs> the redneck in me is like, yeah. I don't know. But at home now, yeah. I blend, we blend the butter's worse than maple. <laughs> and my boys are all into that now. Yeah. It's like, no, you got to mix them both because pure maple's yeah. it's not as good as the blend. I think the, the Canadian people would be well served by having cracker barrels up there. Oh, yeah. They might finally understand what maple right. syrup is supposed to taste like. I think they're just distracted because their national flag, uh, for whatever reason, they decided to go with a pot leaf. I never understood. Yeah, but if they could focus on something, it's a hard bit. to really understand yeah. true craftsmanship of of uh, right. historical I sweeteners. Think, like the pot leaves are going to give you get your hungry, you get the munchies, fine. Yeah. But I don't know if you're the best equipped to really understand the nuance and complexity of a genuinely good maple syrup. No, you're going to be fine with like a Splenda right. at that point. They're just high, high, uh, and unable to differentiate the cheap from the bad, which mm -hmm. is fine. I mean, there is a time and place for people who aren't equipped to comprehend or understand all of the nuance, the, the sous-son, really, of high-end maple syrup. I'm starting to add up all of the major donors in my <laughs> head really of good. Wizard Academy who are from Just Canada. Just in this line here. Just here <laughs> in here alone. So, both I in mean, Florida. Florida, I believe. Michael Drew, who knows where the hell he is. Canada. Michael Drew, he's all over the place all the time. Kate and Joe, are they Canadian? No, they're in their northeast. Northeast, okay. I don't remember where Garo is. I don't know. Canada. Anyway. <laughs> that, uh... Do we have any comments? <laughs> Anyone? Hold on. I just, I, just want to sit, I just want to sit in it for a while. Yeah. Just kind of savor the troll. Sorry, one. Eight, uh, one Sam the dog 78. Are vibrations bad for whiskey? Mm, no, it won't matter. Uh, the weather's warming up. He wants to combine hobbies, manifesting and taking your bicycle trip far away to the liquor store to buy a bottle. You'll be fine. Yeah, and that's fine. Just yep. uh, make sure it's sealed. Yeah, mm -hmm. The vibration might uh, have a cork pop loose. Yeah, vibrations will be fine. Bradley Dick, if a distillery makes a corn whiskey, used barrel, then mm. finishes it in a virgin oak cask, 
Can it be considered a bourbon at no. that point? No, it's only it, first barrel in. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and also, um, if you take a bourbon and then you put it in some other type of used barrel, technically it's a distilled spirit specialty, even though it will say on the label bourbon finished. finished in such and such barrel. Yep. But it's not categorized legally as a bourbon. Yeah. It's the same category as Fireball. Mm. Thanks, Laws. Well, that's a flavored whiskey. It's not Fireball, but yeah. No, it is. Same category, just still spirit specialty. Same exact thing. <laughs> exactly the same thing. Same exact. Same thing. It's the government. I don't want it to be fireball. I don't want it to literally be fireball. <laughs> but your elected officials, they want it to literally <laughs> be fireball. That beloved whiskey, I blame the Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.